Papua LNG given the go-ahead? Three judges sworn in on reappointment of terms. And Watson Boas to play with SBPNG hunters. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Tuesday's news. Morabe Governor Ginsen Sanu says the Environment Minister Wera Mori has failed the people of Morabe by ignoring their environmental concerns and granting the environment permit for the Wafi Gopu mining project. The environment permit was recently granted in principle to allow for stakeholders to move on with further discussions on the development of the mine. Sanu, in a media briefing last week, says his position remains with the people of Morabe, and that is to say yes to the development of the Wafi Gopu project but no to the deep sea tailings placement method. Party member, but here I'm talking. Morabe Governor Ginsen Saunu says the provincial government's position on DSTP remains. Saunu said the provincial executive council has agreed to remain with the people of Morabe to oppose the deep sea tailing placement method in the Huen Gulf Seas. His announcement follows the decision of the environment minister, Wera Mori, to grant the environment permit in principle to allow further discussions by all stakeholders on the mine's development. As the head of Morbe province, Saunu said this move is an insult to the people of Morbe, who have raised concerns on environment damage in several consultations. We have written to the SEPA minister several times. Even we made two trips to Port Mosby, two or three trips to Port Mosby. Two trips or more than that, they made to lay. All the displays, uh, consultative meetings, all waste, money is wasted, time is wasted, mind boggling. And for Sepa Minister to undermine the people of Morobe and not listening to them, you cannot be a government that cannot listen to people and saying, I am government of the people. <coughs> no. Government is for the people and by the people, and government must listen to the people. Governor Saunu said the environment concerns of the people of Morbe have been taken lightly, despite the public outcry in the province against DSTP. SEPA minister has failed the people of Morbe. I think straightforward he has failed the people of Morbe, simply not listening to the cries and worries uh, of the people of Morbe province. Meanwhile, the Environment Minister in other reports said his decision to grant the environment permit in principle was by law and through the recommendation of the Environment Council after it accepted Wafi Gopu Joint Ventures Environment Impact Statement in September last year. The Morbe governor, on the other hand, said the provincial government is prepared to take the matter to court as a last resort. The next thing, next step to take is to take it to, uh, to the court, uh, and court by scaling where the consent belong people and um, overlooked. So PEC belong me, making this position now because the uh, Provincial Executive Council, Sana Wantemi, long making the issue of saying no DSTP, yes to Wafi, or some people he talk. Charlene Airy, National MTV News, Lay. Three judges were sworn in on their reappointment of terms in office today at the Government House. Justice Jacinta Murray, Justice Paulus Doa and Acting Judge Elizabeth Sulip were appointed by the Judicial and Legal Services Commission. Presiding over the swearing-in ceremony of the three judges of the National and Supreme Court of Justice was the Governor-General Sir Bob Dadai and at Cora Reports. Justice Murray and Justice Doa were sworn in and reappointed for a period of 10 years, both serving their first and second terms respectively. Substantive Judge Elizabeth Sulep was sworn in for a period of one year. The judges recited before His Excellency the Governor General Sir Bob Dadai the Declaration of Office, Declaration of Loyalty and Judicial Declaration. Having witnessed and speaking highly of the sworn in judges was Chief Justice Sir Gib Salika, who said that the reappointment of the judges brings the number nationwide up to a total of 45. The appointment of Justice uh, Doa 
has now brought the, our ceiling up to 40 judges, excluding the Chief Justice and the Deputy Chief Justice. Including the Chief Justice and Deputy Chief Justice, that's two additional, and therefore that will be 42. And so we now have a full complement of judges, uh, 42 judges, that's substantive judges, uh, in the both serving in the Supreme Court and in the National Court. And then we have uh, three acting judges who, are, who, who now make it to, um, we've got 42 substantive judges, and then three, that's now 45. So 45 judges so far we have. The Chief Justice emphasized on the need for more judges and the judiciary's plan to increase from the current 40 to 60 judges and that the judiciary will be proposing to government to increase the number soon. Uh, whilst the Judicial and Legal Services Commission had um, agreed to that submission from the judiciary, that submission will have to go f to cabinet for the endorsement of the cabinet. And of course, uh, the, the, that cabinet uh, it will be informed by the Minister for Justice to, um, and the Minister for Justice will present that submission to Cabinet for Cabinet to take it on from there. So the plan is to have 60. And despite being the third arm, the judiciary has also had its fair share of challenges. This was also highlighted by the Chief Justice. And the main challenge is for the judges to deliver, uh, to, to hear cases in a timely manner and to deliver those decisions in a timely manner. Those are m my um, immediate challenges that have been, these are challenges not that not only happened yesterday or, or in my time, no. They've been around uh, ever since um, the days of um, our first national Chief Justice Saburi. They, those, those challenges have always been there. Uh, but in those days, in the earlier days, the, it was not that much. The workload there was, uh, was uh, not as much as what we have today. Uh, workload has increased. The Chief Justice reiterates that the swearing in and the reappointment of the three judges helps in the need for more judges to carry the load that the judiciary currently has. Enet Cora, National MTV News. After 22 months of delay, the agreement for the Papua LNG project has finally been signed to go ahead. In a signing ceremony this afternoon at Government House that saw project developer Total and partners ExxonMobil and Oil Search Petroleum Minister Karen Gakua said the signing enables the front-end engineering and design to go ahead with the construction phase to follow eventually. Whilst the total cost of the project is not certain at the moment, Prime Minister James Marape said the current project estimate is around 12 billion US dollars. The Papua LNC project agreement was signed in April 2019. Um, it's now 20, 12, 22 months, 22 months since the, that agreement was signed, and so it, it has had an incubation period for that long. And one may be wondering why such an incubation period when we should be moving into um, the various stages that you've got through, go through to bring the project into reality. Uh, the reason was that uh, there was an opportunity to uh, join the, um, uh, the potential project in Pinyang uh, with the signed Papua Islands, we combined them and, and um, um, do them together as a joint project. Um, so every opportunity had to be given to the project partners to explore that uh, option. Um, after 22 months, uh, it was felt that um, uh, we should uh, delink the two projects. Uh, Papua, because it's a fully executed agreement, uh, is capable of proceeding as a standalone project. Um, and um, Pinyang can follow its own pace after this event. So thank you very much, uh, Total. We also say thank you to ExxonMobil Oil Sets uh, on behalf of the PNG partners in Kumul, uh, petroleum on behalf of our national government as well as MRDC on behalf of the provincial government and the landowners. 
So we appreciate very much this project is now being moved. Uh, our government will ensure that all necessary support is, is, is procured for this project to be moved as, as our project uh, developers move into feed states. In fact, pre-feed will uh, take, take place in the redesigning of uh, it from three-train project to a two-train project. And as they move to a, a feed and FID, hopefully sometimes the next year, then uh, this project, which obviously will cost to the minimum about $12 billion or so for construction, will be ready to go. Leaders from the central province have called on their people not to be involved in ethnic fights in Port Moresby. This follows killings in the city as a result of an alleged drug deal gone wrong between two ethnic groups allegedly from Goilala in central and Hela provinces. While police investigations continue, central governor Robert Agarobe said it was a law and order problem and not an ethnic issue. The central governor was at Two Mile in Port Moresby yesterday with member for Goilala, William Sam, to address the people dwelling in the city with one message. Stay away from ethnic fights. That is a very, very dangerous language to speak. So if you not can go down with part. Over recent days, reports have surfaced over a fight that led to casualties between two groups, the Goilala from Central and Hela. The leaders told the people it was not an ethnic issue and it was simply a drug deal gone wrong and they should refrain from further retaliation. So we better stop speaking this language. But you won't peace with them or tari on it. And fight or tari pulling camera, tari in a camera, fight with the Goilala and Central here. No God. So let's do away with that mentality. This is a law and order problem. Every time I please. So be like asking myself, you mean I can pull me go or pull me down? The Goilalas who gathered called on the Member of Parliament to fix the road into their district so that they can return home instead of roaming around in the city. Very sorry, Minister William Sam. Very sorry, Honorable Robert Agarobe. That is an abuse, an intention from all people, leader man, me, present him, touch him road, and all these things. Governor Agarobe called on his people to put their differences aside and focus on their lives. He says as people of Central Province, whose land has been converted for the city's use, they are most welcome to come into the city, however, must be responsible. Naturally, naturally, my people of Central Province, my people of Golala, am ground law. You push them, they will retaliate. Governor Paco and Chechenko, my good honorable Prime Minister, we need to deal with this issue sooner than later. The two leaders committed to repatriating the deceased back to the villages. Bradley Valenaki, National MTV News. You're watching National MTV News. We'll have more of the day stories after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Parents and the administration of the Southern Highlands Provincial Government have raised concerns on the poor standard of education in the province. Provincial Administrator Dr. Joseph Kajistan said there will be a review in the provincial education system to identify the cause of the poor performances by grade 10 and 12 students. This has prompted the provincial education advisor to resign. Basinatayama reports from Mount Hagen. The Southern Highlands Provincial Education Board and Division have received criticisms in the past two weeks by parents and stakeholders due to the poor performances in the grade 10 and 12 national examination results. Provincial Administrator Dr. Joseph Kajestan says with education as their main priority, the Southern Highlands Provincial Government subsidizes school fees of 20 million kina every year and teachers cannot blame the government but must provide quality education. Dr. Kajestan says it is a burden seeing schools not performing up to standard. Starting from the advisor down, you have to punish resource. What is the problem? Senior teachers, are you doing your job? All teachers, 
Are you doing your job? Are you honest with your work? We can't blame the government. We can't blame the leaders. We only got part to play. More complaints and pressure were put towards the former provincial education advisor, Chi Mepio, who resigned recently. Despite stepping down due to poor performances of the students, Mepio said it is a collective effort of the education board and division, the school, parents and the students to achieve quality education. Mepio said standards officer and school inspectors have a vital role to play so that teachers are in the classroom and students are given quality education. I urge them to improve a bit because the standard is dropping because these important key players must have to play and know their jobs properly without being biased. They go to play the game that you know, to ensure that this stability in education in the province. Imbongu MP and Intergovernment Relations Minister Pila Niningi encourages parents to also provide the needed support for their children to see them excel. You must make sure that this kid go was probably eat probably go to school. You listen, look after them, then the kid will learn. The Southern Highlands province has 300 elementary to secondary schools with more than 2,000 teachers. It is a big sector that needs more attention from the government in terms of building more staff houses, classrooms, dormitories, science and computer labs, libraries and upgrading rundown facilities. Vastanata Yama, National MTV News, Mount Hagen. Leader of opposition and member for Vanimo Green, Belton Nama, wants acquittals of funds he has released over the years to Green River. He is demanding this from several businesses and ward councils in the remote district. According to him, thousands of Kina had been entrusted to several individuals in Green River, but nothing has been done to reflect the money given. Happiness. The leader of opposition and member for Vanimo Green, Belden Nama, was recently in Vanimo Green Station to present 150,000 kina to a local business, Green River Traders, to support its efforts in building a hatchery. They aim to supply Freedom Mine once the mine is fully operational. But before presenting the check, Nama questioned other businesses in Green River that the district has given money as startup support. The leader wasted no time naming them out in public. Green River Energy, how much money we give in Today, look at one guy walking my quit on my camp. He got a group for us. We give him 500,000. Car want the money go. He bomb. Make him five hundred thousand. Car want the money go. Yep. He don't see away. Make him five hundred thousand. Car want the money go. Tangoi. Make him five hundred thousand. Car the money go. Green River sustainable. Make him car the money go. How much money make him the Green River energy? He said being at the forefront of fighting corruption at the national level, he doesn't want corruption practice in his district, demanding acquittals from those that the district has presented district funds to. Be like in all the traditional line, where you've been seeing money, where you've been seeing car. Be like have a project where you stop the one state now. He said it's common for villages or the people to say the member hasn't given us money or the member has forgotten us. Speaking to his people at Green River Station, he said thousands of kina has been entrusted to leaders in the district and these leaders need to come clear how they use the money instead of blaming the MP. How much money is spent in the school? No got one the primary school by denying. No got one black secondary school by the name. No got one black green you by the name this plan. Responsibility now. Suppose classroom in a snap. Suppose administration blocking a snap. And responsibility for you. Board and management for this black school. It was evident the political differences in Green River with Nama calling on community leaders to leave political affiliations behind and work together to develop the station. Remember walking walk plan. Me want to see your blame, me plan walking walk plan, me plan. Failure is not one to you plan. 
So no can make a mistake. The man will talk straight. Rabbi talk true. Time for politics and time for election. Time for election finish. And time for you make some service come to this thing. Similar sentiments were shared by the district administrator to public servants in the district. Shamin Poreambeb National MTV News. Book Bilang Pekinini in partnership with the Swiss ambassador to PNG will be conducting teacher training for elementary teachers in Eastern Highlands province. This partnership is to support a Swiss-run NGO based in Eastern Highlands with capacity development training for their school teachers. The training includes lessons in phonics routines, early childhood literacy and numeracy, management of classroom settings, lesson planning and delivery of positive behaviour management in the classroom, among others. The teachers will also be supported to run library classes and manage a school library. Bukbilong Pekinini will also provide the teachers and schools with curriculum handbooks, teaching aids and guides in early childhood literacy and numeracy program. Book Belong Pekinini published classroom reader sets, phonics books, as well as a school library kit, which contains 1,000 books in all categories. Members of the public in Leh, including teachers, have raised concerns over the issue of education officers not being present to attend to their queries. Their queries are not attended to quickly due to maintenance of the education division office that is currently in progress. Marbe's program advisor for ed education, Keith Tangui, called on the officers to be present at their designated areas to attend to queries. According to concerned members of the public, whilst maintenance is still underway here at the Morbe Education Office, it's difficult for the teachers and parents' queries to be attended to on time. They said it has also been very difficult for them to find the respective offices to attend to the queries. Even though office run down, renovation going on with the office, but need to be, uh, teachers' uh, needs should be addressed. From now on, uh, education officials coming in late 10, 11, 12, or even some did not attend to their duties. Now it is frustrating. Teachers now you can see waiting around here. Now I don't think this thing shouldn't happen in the near future. So they should have a proper office. Even though renovation is taken on, they asked the provincial government to allocate a proper office for us to now render all these things so we should be motivated and then you cannot find any teacher standing here. Everyone will go. They will go to their job. Us who are on retirement, we will enjoy ourselves. Morbe Education Division Office is one of the public offices in Leh that is currently under maintenance for the first time after 20 years. Construction began in November last year and was supposed to be completed in February 2021. However, construction is still in progress. All our offices do not have any place to stay. Everybody just queuing outside and talking to teachers outside only. But uh, what I'm asking is all the officers who are working within the division must be with us. Uh, we're using the appointment office, so we've given the op appointment office for everybody to work in. I'm working here with the uh, TFF coordinator and the guidance officer. And inspectors and other officers we've given ERICU, ERICU uh, Resource Center material office so that they will have, they have a big space there so they can work there. So all our clients, they come, they go straight to those places. According to the Provincial Program Advisor for Education, Kate Tangui, the officers are supposed to be working at the designated areas and not staying at home. Our officers have seen fit to stay home uh, just because the maintenance is going on and now I'm recalling them back to make sure we deliver the service, we help the people. Uh, rather than placing effort on one person only to do the job. So I'm calling everyone, we work together, 
so that beginning of the year, all teachers are posted well to the districts, children are in class, and then later we can enjoy all the good times that we have. So now is the time that everyone has to work together while the maintenance is going on. Meanwhile, the PPA attends to the queries whilst located here at the finance office. Tangui said most of the queries are supposed to be addressed by the district education managers and the inspectors. What our district education managers should be doing is to attend to those problems at the district level in their office at the district. Small things like appointment, uh, um, where there's a problem uh, has been developed between the teachers uh, and the board of management or any other problems should be solved at the district level first. But many people are just coming to the province in very small issue that we can solve at the district level, they bring to the province. So I'd like to ask all the district education managers, inspectors to not to send people to our provincial office. Julie Badui, OWA, National MTV News, Lay. The Education Secretary, Dr. Uke Kombra, has issued directives for the Balob Teachers College principal to be charged and suspended for not following proper processes in enrolling students. Dr. Kombra said all applications from non-school leavers have to be screened by the college before their names are submitted to Education Department for further verification and approval. He added that some of the students who were enrolled at the college in the past two years did not have their names verified and approved by the Education Department before enrollment. This action to discipline the principal comes after Balop graduates from 2019 and 2020 raised concerns over delays in getting their diploma certificates. Combra said the graduates who have not received their certificates are those who weren't enrolled following the department's procedures. In commemorating Safe Internet Day today, the national government launched the Get Safe Online PNG initiative to provide safer online environment for Papua New Guineans, a non-profit entity that will be a critical component of the UN government's Commonwealth Cyber Security Program that PNG and all Commonwealth nations are members of. NICTA, being the responsible agency to tackle cyber-related issues, is putting in place programs to create safer online online environment for children especially. In commemorating the Safer Internet Day 2021, NICTA and other partners are refocusing on providing not only a safe online environment, but accessibility and affordable internet services for users throughout Papua New Guinea. With the increase in internet usage, where most are children and young adults, there is a need to prevent identity theft, fake news and cyberbullying. It has become such a powerful enabler. It is now the single most dominant influence in the daily lives of all societies in the modern world. With that also comes the constant threat and erosion of our traditional and cultural norms that have been passed on from generation to generation till today. Since the introduction of internet services in PNG, no proper laws were in place to protect users against cybercrime and cybersecurity. Only recently in 2016, the national government passed the NICTA Act to address the increase in reported cyber-related crimes. This has seen the setting up of the Police Cyber Unit in Port Mosby that investigates and prosecutes cybercrime offenders. PNG being part of the Commonwealth Cyber Security Program has seen the support of the British government in creating a safer online environment. And what's important for me is I think the initiative meets two core principles of uh, UK uh, government assistance to Papua New Guinea. First of all, any assistance must meet the needs of Papua New Guinea. Um, and I'm delighted that the, the Get Safe Online team have worked so closely with, 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 with you, Minister, with, with your team, uh, with, with NICTA and others, to make sure that what they're, what they're providing meets your needs. So it's not an international um, uh, website just thrown into Papua New Guinea. It's been adapted to meet uh, Papua New Guinea's needs. 
Meanwhile, other areas, Minister Matthew has given instruction to the Information, Communication and Technology Department to review include the following areas. Online child safety, cyberbullying, creating a better internet for children and protecting human rights online. But I can also assure you that your government will not hesitate to introduce even more tougher penalties apart from what is already in place for abusive network proponents, their agents and cohorts in order to make Papua New Guinea a safer country for our internet and online users. Thekla Gunga, National MTV News. In their effort to combat the African swine fever and prevent it from spreading, the ASF task force team has put in place a new work plan for 2021. In this work plan, the task force team will be more focused on the value chain, and that is to introduce better farming techniques for pigs in the affected areas, especially in the Highlands region. This work plan is for a period of six months with assessment and evaluation for a new work plan to be implemented in the next six months. People in the affected areas were also encouraged not to transport pigs to other provinces to help contain the virus from spreading. New work plan for the next six months from January to June 2021, mm -hmm. uh, we, are, we are more diverting towards a value chain. Get people to get uh, learn new ways to farm. And that is, the, that is basically getting away from free ranging yeah, or, or roping pigs to more panning and more manageable kind of small piggy models. So in this work plan here currently that we were having meeting with is more geared towards the SME farming, <coughs> on farm biosecurity practices, training of pig, you know, pig farmers, how best to look after or feed the pigs. In an effort to create employment and growth in the tourism and hospitality industry, a local businessman has established a new hotel in the nation's capital. The newly built S&J Hotel is located in the Gordons area and set to open this Saturday. The hotel has over 30 rooms, which includes Dulux suite, executive and premium rooms. Also on offer are conference rooms, cafeteria, swimming pool and other amenities. According to the owner, the five-year project cost him over 12 million kina. However, he is satisfied with the project. He challenged Papua New Guineans to get into SME businesses and do something for themselves. He's This is his way of contributing to the government's vision to take back PNG. And now looking at the NAS Fund market report, the Kina opened unchanged at 0 0.2850 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina will buy 0 0.2775 US dollars, 0 0.3554 Australian dollars, 0 0.2220 Euro and 28.54 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York closed gold is trading higher, coffee and cocoa closed lower and copper closed higher. Palm oil closed lower and copper closed higher, crude oil is trading higher. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed at 237.52 points higher. The ASX 200 is trading at 59.48 points lower and the All Ordinaries is trading at 58.68 points lower. And Chukai Sports is next to details after the break. Chukai Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. The Doncaster Rugby League Club in the United Kingdom have agreed to allow Watson Boas to train and play for the SBPNG Hunters in the 2021 Intra Super Cup competition in Queensland until he is able to return to the UK. SBPNG Hunters coach Matthew Church said he welcomed the decision and will include Boas in the squad immediately. 
The ranks of the SP PNG Hunters have been given a boost with the inclusion of Kumulhaf Watson Boas into the squad. In a press release from PNG RFL, Hunters coach Matthew Church stated that Watson has been given the green light by the Rugby Football League in the UK to register with the Hunters in the QRL. Watson will be with the Hunters until April. This will allow him to maintain his match fitness in anticipation of the Bedford League One season getting underway in May, along with travel restrictions to England being lifted. Doncaster Chief Executive Carl Hall stated that it was in Watson's best interest to get some game time under his belt while the opportunity is available to him. Hall thanked the SPPNG Hunters management and in particular coach Matthew Church who has kept in regular contact within the past couple of months. Hall stated that the relationship between the two clubs is a very strong one and can only be a positive. Haxilovai, Chukai Sports. The managers of the country's semi-professional rugby league competition and the Papua New Guinea National Rugby League competition reiterated yesterday their stance on why the three bids of Simba Warriors, Motu Koita Lakatoys and the Sepik Pride were rejected from joining the competition this season. So to dummy half again. The 2021 Digital Cup competition will remain with the existing 12 clubs this season. It had been a long and suspensive wait with three clubs bidding for entry this season. Sipic Pride had a bid for a team from the Sipic area, while Chimbu Warriors were looking to make their return to the competition. The Motu Koita Lagatois, based in Port Mosby, also had a bid to enter the competition. The three bids were rejected on different grounds, but that didn't sit well with most on social media with obvious disapproval. Posts on Facebook calling it unfair and not in the best interest to grow the game. Since the three rejection letters surfaced on social media, there has been an outcry for an explanation why the bids were rejected. Papua New Guinea National Rugby League competition, which manages the Digicel Cup, in a statement yesterday by Chairman Adrian Chow, basically reiterated what was written on the letters. Chow said the Motu Koita Lagatois bid was well supported with reputable corporate sponsors. However, the PNG NRLC's constitution adopted in 2018 allows only one franchise per province. With the NCD Vipers already in the competition, the team's bid was rejected. But he did add that approval is required from the Papua New Guinea Rugby Football League to allow two or more affiliate franchises for a province. He said they will continue to liaise and undertake the process of consultation with stakeholders for justification before recommending to PNG RFL to accept their proposal. As for the Simbu Warriors, Chow said the proposed naming rights sponsor was not acceptable as it breached exclusive rights granted under current competition commercial arrangements. With Esprit Brewery, the platinum sponsor, the Warriors sponsor, Mountain Fruit Wine, breaches the arrangement under the category of alcohol products. The Warriors' proposed home ground, Dixon Oval, was not to a satisfactory standard also following inspection last month. For the Sipic Pride bid, it was unsuccessful as it showed no evidence or letters in support of sponsorship and an active local league was lacking. He added that it is essential that local competitions be activated so a player base is established and administration is improved. But Chow also added that the approval of four of the franchises, Mount Hagen Eagles, Enga Miox, Wagi Tumbe and Gulf Iso, is subject to payment of their areas from the 2020 season. The 2021 Digicel Cup competition is tentatively scheduled to kick off in April. Fidelis Sukina, Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports continues with more after these messages. Stay with us. True Kai Sports. Welcome back to True Kai Sports. The Back to School Challenge held its qualifying finals last weekend as the competition drew to a conclusion. Teams involved in the touch rugby and volleyball competitions reached the knockout rounds as the competition and rivalries heated up. The Back to School Challenge was in full swing last weekend as teams and spectators from around the Waigani area turned up to enjoy the sunny weather with touch rugby and volleyball matches, with the major semi-finals also taking place. 
as players in both codes took the opportunity to have a run on the field and on the court. In the touch rugby competition, Firefox will play leftovers in the grand final next Saturday. While in the volleyball competition, the top teams from the four groups will play off for the final spots. The Back to School Challenge was created to involve school-age youths and others from the Waigani area, giving them the opportunity to participate in sporting activities, getting them out of the house and off the streets, and instead competing on the field and on the courts. Haksti Lovai, Chukai Sports. And that story wraps up Chukai Sports, the weather forecast for the next 24 hours after the break. Chukai Sports. Chukai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. A look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow. Cloudy periods with a few showers in Port Moresby, Daru and Kerama. A shower or two in Alotau and rain and thunderstorms in Popandita. In the Mamasa region, cloudy periods with a shower or two in Leh. Some showers in Wau, rain showers in Medang, showers and thunderstorms in Wewak and Vanimo. A shower or two, then cloudy weather in Loringa. Some showers, then fine weather in KVN, Kokopo and Rabao. Showers and thunderstorms in Kimbe and Bokai. And in the Highlands region, rain showers in Mount Hagen. Rain showers, then cloudy weather in Goroka, Kondiawa, Mendi and Wabeg. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that's the news for and weather for today, Tuesday, the 9th of February 2021. On behalf of the entire MTV News team right around the country, pleasant viewing, be safe and good night.